just want to talk, uh, spend a few minutes um, kind of leading in and, and creating a, a preview of what we'll be discussing um, in the mitochondrial summit and why that's so important. Um, we'll dig into quite a bit. What's going to be awesome is there's going to be some hands on. We're going to be hearing, you know, from a Chinese medicine perspective of, you know, what the, the mitochondrial aspect is that's chi, you know, that energy production. We're going to be talking about, you know, how do you address that herbally? We'll be talking about it from um, a neurogenic perspective, the brain and the nervous system. Dr. Eccles is going to be talking about, you know, what symptoms um, and patterns will actually start to emerge. We're going to have some hands on as far as diagnosis and, and treatment. So we haven't had a whole lot of hands on in quite a while. Um, so there'll be that. There's going to be a lot of learning. We'll be talking about what are mitochondria, what's the, you know, a lot of the information about them, a little bit of uh, biochemistry, but we'll be talking about, you know, all the different issues that you see with that, why it's important to, to be looking at those and a lot of the different modalities that are used in our group from peptides to acupuncture and herbs and chiropractic and, and IVs and supplements and all these different things that, can be utilized um, because there's not just one answer, you know, it's, and we're finding that with the, uh, the regenerative space, you know, there's, there's many solutions for uh, these different problems. And so we're going to be discussing that and from a um, multifaceted viewpoint of, of what can be done. And so uh, I'm going to dig into a little bit about that, but, you know, as people pop on this morning, um, I am also, anytime that I'm presenting, I, I don't mind getting off topic. And so if anyone has any questions about anything, um, marketing or the ROF or looking at labs or what labs to order, why do you look at certain labs, um, certain disease processes or dysfunctions that you may be coming across or hurdles or patient communication, any of those, um, shoot questions. I, you know, I like to, to, make sure that from time to time we are actually giving space just to answer in those questions. Cause a lot of us have the same questions or we're, most of us are going to be faced with the same problems within our uh, businesses and the different spaces that we're operating in. So as any, uh, as anybody pops on, I'm going to bring this up several times, ask any questions that you may have that, um, you know, pertain to business or medicine and if I have an answer, I'll, I'll, I'll spew it out at you. Um, so with that, let's talk a little bit about mitochondria. Most people know that it's energy production. And you know, that's what we all associate with the mitochondria. And, you know, when you're talking about mitochondrial dysfunction, there's a huge difference between mitochondrial dysfunction and mitochondrial disease. Mitochondrial disease doesn't have the, the, the best prognosis depending on the specific type of mitochondrial disease once it's, you know, once there's a diagnosis, I mean, you got to think it really comes down to energy, right? It always comes down to energy and everything, you know, everything's energy, everything's vibration, but you know, if you can't make energy, that's what these mitochondria do, then, you know, your, your quality of life is going to dwindle. You know, you're on a, you're on a very limited timeline there. So, you know, mitochondria, there's a lot of uh, deep dive that we could get into it. And, you know, we all know like the glucose glycolysis pathways yielding very little ATP to 36 to 38 ATP. One thing that we don't talk about a lot is the energy production through fatty acids. And that's like 130 ATP, which is crazy. So you get these massive amounts of energy that could be produced through, um, the mitochondrial pathways is, is specifically with those fatty acid oxidation and acetyl-CoA. But I think some of the most interesting stuff about mitochondria has to do with all the things that are necessary for them to function properly. And that's where the dysfunction comes in. And, it, and this goes back to when we're looking at our labs. You know, one of the reasons, um, you know, we push looking at labs from a particular step-by-step -step process is really due to, to how energy is produced. I mean, our first three priorities that we teach as far as looking at blood labs, the iron, the glucose, and the thyroid all impact 
mitochondrial function and, and are impacted by mitochondrial function. You know? So it really, the first question is, where is this person with their energy? And because those will affect it. If your glucose is off, you, you're going to, you, one, you're going to affect the end product of the mitochondria, but you're also going to then affect the mitochondria itself. Um, same thing with the thyroid, same thing with the iron, but it's all these lifestyle things. And so when you take on a new patient, you know, you don't have to think mitochondria, but you do want to think energy and you don't want to just get in this mindset where they have a mitochondrial problem because everything that's going on with the person usually is going to end up disrupting their mitochondria in the long end, in the, in the, on the long side of this. So when it comes to that, when you got someone coming in the office, you know, your questions shouldn't be, you know, what supplement do they need? Right. When we got a problem that's coming to the office, especially from a functional standpoint, and now we're finding this from a restorative or regenerative aspect of, of, you know, why can't this person's body regenerate or what do they need to restore damaged tissue? It's about lifestyle medicine. I mean, that's really what we do here. And that's about deep clinical work. Like, you know, whether you're doing the chiropractic aspect where you're looking at, uh, spinal alignment, subluxations, things that are disrupting the nervous system, the ability for the nervous system to communicate, whether you're looking at it from a Chinese medicine standpoint, where there's the balance of the five energies or the yin yang um, theory. You know, there's a lot of different ways that we look at that and the, the, the meridians being affected. Um, osteopathic, same thing, balanced, you know, it's all these different things. It doesn't matter what your forte is. When someone comes in, you, you kind of start a case study off by their intake, right? You, you take in what's going on, their health history. It's deep investigative work into someone and finding out what's unique about the individual. Because what we find as we go along is there's a lot of similarities, especially when it comes to solving the problem as far as like the five pillars. We know people need certain things in order for their body to work. And there's a very particular pattern you have to go through. But the path that you're taking somebody down is very much based on their individual needs, but it isn't just about what supplement they need. You know, when we talk about healthy behaviors, you know, diet is hugely important. When they eat, right, that circadian rhythm, that affects mitochondria um, in the long run. You know, that cortisol melatonin balance is super important. That affects the immune system. So, you know, you have a lot of effect there. Um, so when they eat, what they eat, how much they're eating, those are good questions, right? And then when we're looking at their rest, um, again, that circadian rhythm, how much rest are they getting? What do they need? Is it cleaning out their, their, their brain, um, you know, their stress management, what's going on there? I mean, all these things are linked to inflammatory processes. And when we get down, chronic inflammation totally disrupts mitochondria. It will affect all energy pathways. It interfects all signaling. Um, so all these things that we do on a regular basis. So what you've been doing for a long time with this lifestyle medicine is actually like mitochondrial medicine as well. You know, I don't think anyone's ever used that term, but I like the idea, mitochondrial medicine. So, you know, we'll be getting into and applying specific details of why these things are important because you're very rarely going to have somebody that comes in, if ever, that says, I think I have a problem with my mitochondria. Um, they're going to have energy issues. That's what they're going to tell you. I have energy issues, um, that fatigue, the brain fog and organ dysfunction, you know? So, and when you're looking at, you know, the specific organs that someone may be having issues with, it's going to be the ones that need their most energy, like the brain, the heart, the liver, the kidneys, you know, your darker tissues usually are the ones that have more mitochondrial density. And so it comes down to energy. So when we're looking at back on our labs, we say, okay, well, we look at iron, right? That's usually iron and oxygen. You need those for cellular respiration. And that's the mitochondria. Like the first four phases of mitochondrial respiration require iron, right? And this goes back to all, all these different cycles that you learn in basic biochemistry on mitochondrial function. Um, but you need that iron for a lot of different reasons. And you need it for cellular respiration. You need it for turnover. This goes to your restorative medicine. And for anybody that's just joining, we're kind of doing a hodgepodge. We're talking about mitochondria. We're talking about our stomach coming up. And we're talking about all aspects of functional medicine right now um, within my like limited experience with it. So 
If you do have any questions pertaining to anything, it can be off topic. Um, it can be on topic. Bring it up. Let's talk about it. Um, we're, we're free flowing today. We're free rapping. So um, I know you guys have some questions out there. So hit them in the chat box. Let's have some group discussion today. Um, get a little bit more involvement, get the rust off from the weekend. So iron, incredible. And, and I've talked about iron quite a bit because this is where the inflammatory process is going to come where it disrupts energy production. Because, you know, when everybody talks about doing a detox, and this is one of my favorite topics to, to be like the health skeptic on is, is detoxes. Because it's like, those green smoothies don't do shit for people if they don't have iron, right? So the first phase of liver detoxification is iron dependent, those cytochrome P450, that whole family. And there's, there's a lot of those guys and they require iron. That's, you know, you need, you need a cytochrome for um, caffeine metabolism, nicotine metabolism, uh, drug metabolism, right? You need all these things. Um, so if you have a disruption in there, you're going to disrupt the mitochondria in the liver um, if you don't have that iron. But then you also start creating other issues. Now, that's, that, that creates an incredibly interesting pathway. Your liver's main source of energy is glucose. So if the liver can't do its job, guess what kind of problems you start seeing? You see blood sugar problems, insulin resistant problems. You start seeing changes in AST, ALT. You start seeing problems in GGT. You start seeing problems in lactic acid dehydrogenase. It's like everything like culminates, right? So you go, okay, well, we know, that's why we say, okay, that's why iron needs to be like a priority. If the iron's low, all these other things are going to be disrupted. I mean, your liver is 60% of that thyroid hormone conversion into to total T3. It's also responsible for the albumin and globulin, you know, your, your, your carrier proteins for most of your sex hormones and your thyroid hormones. So you know, you, you want to make sure that the liver, it's dark, it's mitochondrial, dense, it needs iron, right? And then needs glucose. So those are important pathways. Now, when it comes to glucose, there's some really interesting research now, and they're finding, okay, when you're looking at insulin resistance, especially with this inability for the GLUT4 transport, so your muscle, your skeletal muscle, um, to actually use glucose, You'll, you'll get inhibition there if there's been an issue with blood sugar. And they're finding that it has to do with some origins within the mitochondria. The mitochondrial fatty acid oxidation is disrupted. The ability to use triglycerides and the fatty acids to actually make energy, then it inhibits the ability for insulin sensitivity to occur um, to move the GLUT4 transport, right? And so when you use things that improve that, like NAD precursors, like the NA, NMN or nicotinamide riboside, that upregulates this, this pathway. So we get a lot of different things that, that improve that, but also like, um, um, ALA, CLA, um, the alpha lipoic acid, the conjugated linoleic acid, they all help improve that mitochondrial pathway of that fatty acid oxidation, um, the, the precursors to NAD, and then even some of our peptides, the MOTC, the 5-amino-1-MQ. And I don't know if anybody's, by the way, total sidebar, anybody using 5-amino-1-MQ? We have some patients on that, and they're having massive, they're having massive responses to it. You know, and I think as time goes by, We'll start to separate these ideas of like if AOD is better or MOTC is better. MOTC is going to be incredible for mitochondria, but um, the 5-amino-1-MQ, it helps improve NAD usage. It helps improve insulin sensitivity, especially age-related insulin sensitivity, which is going to hit a lot of people. Your fatty acid oxidation pathways improve. And that that's like mitochondrial affected. And, and there was some really good research that Peter Atia had shown that they actually got better improvement at, out of um, insulin resistance at the muscle layer, which is mitochondrial, um, by using the precursors to NAD and not NAD specifically. They got better responses out of NMN and NR, um, nicotinamide mononucleotide and nicotinamide riboside. Um, rather than the NAD itself. And it actually turned that back on. So like, what are the symptoms of someone that has insulin resistance at the muscle? Well, 
they're the type of person that they they work out and they bust their ass in the gym and it doesn't affect their their metabolism they don't burn off fat they just struggle to lean out from doing exercise or they can easily see the results of over exercise um that's really common that's actually probably your top cause of polycystic ovarian syndrome is muscle resistant uh or insulin resistant at the muscle layer so pretty crazy pretty crazy stuff so um that's going to be the glucose right there's your your link to your mitochondria and what's crazy is in order for the the glucose gets pulled into your cell through the like if we're talking at the muscle you have all kinds of of, of glucose transporters but glute four is insulin and, and exercise induced and you know it's going to go through glycolysis it's going to create your lactic acid dehydrogenase as a byproduct um as you're making that atp and that's how you can see there's insulin resistance or you're having a glucose problem or or um hypoglycemia is that ldh is either too high or too low most of the time when there's a glucose problem ldh is low and so that's something to always look for but then this is really interesting how the thyroid which requires mitochondria is also affecting the mitochondria it's like as you learn this stuff it's like this unique web and so what we do is with the lab we start picking one thing out of the time and we address it right it's like it is a it's a web of stuff and it almost seems overwhelming the more my team learn they usually go through this space they're like what's the right thing to do like where do you start with all this stuff right it's like a mess when people are like i've tried everything and nothing works well usually it's because you have to address and priority and two you just can't throw everything at them at once you pick out one thing and get some improvement then move to the next and the way we prioritize the labs and the way we prioritize the five pillars really helps but there's a p53 pathway in the mitochondria that's t3 dependent so it's really interesting so you got to get this energy into the cell right and we talked about the glucose pathway but even your cholesterols right these cholesterols they get in the cell the ldl particles um they require t3 to activate the ldl gene that takes it in the receptor in the cell that pulls it in which is one of the reasons why if the thyroid's low you have higher cholesterol levels but once it gets in there and it gets split up in the triglycerides and the cholesterol is being properly used in the mitochondria there's a mitochondrial pathway that's specifically thyroid hormone dependent and so again we're back to this energy process so we go okay do they have enough oxygen do they have enough iron right do they have enough or do they have properly regulated glucose and then do they have properly regulated thyroid hormone if they don't they're going to end up with some mitochondrial dysfunction right and that's energy levels so again your big your big stuff like heart liver kidney and brain you know brain fog is going to be massive and there's a lot of overlap and usually if you think there's overlap then there is and it's it this all kind of comes together and makes sense like energy production but the thing that's really important is that when it comes to recovery whether it's using you know whatever form of restorative or regenerative therapy is your preference you know whether it's bone marrow or you know any of the other pathways prp um even using like the bpc you have to have the energy in place to ramp up your repair process to make new tissue right it takes a lot of energy to make new things right because you got to take all these raw ingredients and you have your worker cells you have your macrophages going there and tearing up the damaged tissue and cleaning it out all these things require massive amounts of energy and so these energy pathways are super important and then let's say you're talking about reversing a disease process methylating your dna turning off certain pathways putting the body in a state of repair it takes a lot of focus it takes a lot of um energy it takes a lot of attentiveness and this is where you know i'm saying hey it, it requires deep clinical work on these you know um if you have a patient that's not getting better through the typical process what you want to do is you want to come back and you want to readdress some of these priorities and make sure you're not missing anything it can get pretty hairy 
um, and it can get pretty complicated, but you can keep it simple by looking for those priorities to start with and minimizing their inflammation. And that should be, you know, in the beginning of a program, you know, when we do in our office, we usually do a, what we call a fresh start. And before we get into detoxification and digestion, we make sure we have all the labs. We start them on a basic diet protocol, usually paleo, and then it's um, modified to fit their unique situation. Like if they have insulin sensitivity issues, if they have some major nutrient deficiencies, if they have kidney issues, you know, you're, you're modifying that paleo, you know, do you need to minimize their lectins and their leptins? So they have autoimmunity. You want to get rid of dairy and gluten and, and then have them modify that, but it's step-by-step, step, right? You can't expect someone to swallow all of these um, changes and be successful and sustain that when they're making massive changes in their lives. They have to do, again, even making the changes have to be one step at a time. Hey everybody, Reagan Archibald here with Go Wellness. And if you liked this episode, if it actually helped inspire you to be a better practitioner, help more people, establish a much better foundation for your business, then I'm going to ask a favor of you. And that favor is to for you to share this with somebody you care about and love in the healthcare field. I don't mind if it's an acupuncturist, a functional medicine practitioner of any sorts, a naturopathic doctor, a medical doctor, any type of endocrinologist or specialist, we need to get this community strong and we can't do it without your help. So I wanna thank you from the bottom of, of my heart for all the hard work you're putting in day in and day out. I know it can be a grind, especially with some of the chronic cases that you're treating, but this show will help transform the way that you think, help transform the way you practice and change the lives of thousands. Thank you for being part of our community. Oh,